crafting journey here that journey chick on instagram so happy that you guys are all following me on instagram maybe you know maybe i'll uh go live on instagram later why not um today is tuesday the day that i have to go into the office and we all know what happened last week when i went into the office i ended up in the emergency room because of this chest thing it's it's anxiety it is what it is right here's what i started yesterday this is that red riding hood uh cap that i'm making so this is the back side of it you know the and instead of a huge large band it just has like this very small uh band like you do 10 stitch, you know, 10 rows and you fold it over. And then the rest is just this knit stitch until it gets to be about 10 inches. So yeah, something to do at work if I get bored, which doesn't happen very often, but you never know. So let's, uh, let's get to diamond painting. I, uh, I finished one color yesterday. I started working again on her face, on this flesh color of her face. I think I've been avoiding this flesh color. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I'm loving the cat, though. But, yeah, we're going to... We're almost done with this thing. So, maybe by this weekend we can wrap this up and move on to... Uh, go back to Alice Lost. Um, and I think what I, my plan is, uh, you know... I always plan to finish one work in progress a month. That would be this one here, because this one I started last year. Um, and then I will go back to Alice Lost for the remainder of the month. And then April 1st, I will start uh, the mystery painting, which may or may not be an Alice. We won't know because uh, it's a mystery. <laughs> and if you guys didn't get in on the mystery diamond painting, Maybe next time, because um, I think we'll probably do it again over the summer. We'll have sign-ups. My partner, Mickey Sunshine Creates, and I try to host it a couple of times a year. So we'll see. Um, well, she and I have to discuss when we'll have the sign-ups for the next Mystery Diamond Painting. And look, I got a yarn winder in the mail and I used it. How cool is this? And it's so easy to work from once you wind it up like this. Really cool. Not sure what's going on here, but you know, I, I was just getting used to the winder. Mickey, I had Mickey on um, Messenger and she's helping me put this thing together because like, well, you didn't have to put it together, but there was like the table piece connected to it somehow and we just, couldn't figure it out so what i did was i went at, back to the amazon picture of it and you know how they have several pictures and i was able to kind of figure it out that way we, but i got it done but um what a cool addition to my collection i also got this thing back here that's on top of the heater that is for uh, winding hanks which i have quite a few hanks up here um that i'd like to get to yes I have more yarn than I know what to do with, more patterns than I know what to do with. I know, I'm just, it's crazy. I love yarn art. I just love doing all the crafting. So today we're gonna combine some uh, segments because it's a huge day. It is National Barbie Doll Day, and uh, so that's the, that takes care of the National Day, and this day in history, also 
Barbie doll. <laughs> um, so happy birthday to the Barbie doll. So it made its debut um, in 1959, March 9th, in the Toy Fair in New York City. So Ruth Handler, I don't have a picture of Ruth here with a Barbie doll. Uh, she and her husband co-founded Mattel. And she, her daughter was playing with dolls one day and, and or she, she was wondering why her daughter wasn't playing with her dolls, but instead she was playing with, like with these light paper dolls that had adult features. And she thought, oh, there's a, there's a place in the market that's not, uh, you know, that I could get into. And very creative. She came out with the Barbie doll and it was the first toy that had adult features. And then two years later we get Ken, you know. <laughs> I think my Barbie dolls spent more time naked than any any other uh, <laughs> toy that I had. Oh my goodness. So Barbie's appearance was modeled on a doll named Lily based on a German comic strip character. Originally marketed as a racy gag gift to adult men in tobacco shops, the Lily doll later became extremely popular with children. Mattel bought the rights to Lily and made its own version which Handler named after her daughter, Barbara. With its sponsorship of the Mickey Mouse Club TV program in 1955, Mattel became the first toy company to broadcast commercials to children. They used this medium to promote Barbie until, um, no, and by 1961, the enormous consumer demand for the doll led Mattel to release her boyfriend, Ken, <laughs> and her little sister Skipper came in 1963. Oh my god. Um, and she had a best friend named Midge. Um, also came out in 1963. Um, over the years, Barbie has generated huge sales. There is a museum in uh, Canada for Barbies. Let me see, where is it? Uh, I don't know where it is. It's in Canada. You, my Canadian subscribers know where it is, and they will tell me who did not want a Barbie dream house. I never got one. I'm so deprived. Oh, my God. I love my Barbies. Who didn't? Um, <laughs> so, Barbie has evolved over the years. Um, you know, or, originally, she was just, you know, <laughs> nobody could it was just her beauty was not attainable she had these huge long legs and this gorgeous hair and makeup and not realistic at all <laughs> but w children love them nonetheless you know i liked changing their clothes and you know playing with ken i will tell you what her and Ken did and you know smooch it under the bed um <laughs> uh that, that's what I like you know dressing them up changing their clothes so um here's like a picture of the original I'm going to put a lot of pictures in here here's a picture of one of the original Barbie dolls very like her head is weird shaped there but yeah not a realistic figure for any woman um here is Yes, we have to have inclusion. Yes, disability Barbie. I don't know that that's what they call her, um, but clearly this Barbie has a disability. She comes with a wheelchair. That's pretty cool. This is Eleanor Roosevelt Barbie. How cool is that? I love this Barbie. I want to get it. Um, and that dress is awesome. Yes, kudos to Eleanor Roosevelt. I wonder if it comes with the stand the presidential stand there i bet you it does who's got barbies at home if you got barbies put a picture of your barbies in the facebook group i would love to see them i will admit i have no barbies i don't know what happened to them over the years now here is zombie barbie now i don't know if this was marketed but i think it's just some artwork that somebody did <laughs> Well, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> Here we got astronaut Barbie. That is Sally Ride in the blue. It was a tribute to her. 
well, it's they're both Sally Ride, but it's different costumes. How cool is that? And then <laughs> this is <laughs> I just love this one. This is quarantine Barbie. <laughs> um, she has a television. She's crocheting an afghan. She's got all kinds of snack food. This is like me. I've got my Oreos. I'm crocheting. Got my ice cream. Look, she's got magnum bars there. <laughs> she's streaming Netflix. You know? <laughs> Lots of sweet and salty. Everything you need to get through quarantine. <laughs> I need to find this Barbie. I love this Barbie. <laughs> this is great. Quarantine Barbie. Pregnancy Barbie. How could we not have pregnancy Barbie? And she even has a baby. Look at there. Oh. Oh. Ella Fitzgerald Barbie. That's pretty cool. And um, Kirby Barbie. This is, you know, for us big shouldered women. <laughs> And Tia, not to worry, there are lots of superhero Wonder Woman Barbies out there. Oh my God, I counted probably 10 different versions of Wonder Woman Barbies. So that is so cool. So it is National Barbie Day and this day in history, Barbie was founded. Yay. Now we can talk about judge, jury, and jury because today's going to be a long one. Um, there was no jury selection yesterday. Not, well, kind of, sort of. Let me tell you what happened. In the trial of Derek Chauvin for the death of George Floyd. Now, um, I'm sitting there watching, you know, everybody has masks on. Um, so I, I'm sitting there looking at what I thought were the defense attorneys. And it was Derek Chauvin. I didn't recognize him. You know, he's got on the suit and the mask. I didn't recognize him because I'm used to seeing pictures of him as the police officer. Um, so yeah, he was in the courtroom. And then um, there is, you know, because of COVID and the setup in this courtroom, there is only one seat available to the family. Tootsie's knocking on the door. Oh my goodness. I had closed the kitchen door because I got the dishwasher running and Tootsie doesn't like the closed door. She wants to be with the family. She doesn't usually like to be on camera. Can you see her? There she is. Hey Tootsie. Hi baby girl. Hi honey. What's going on? What's going on? She's like, I want you left me. She, that's her fear that I'm going to leave her you know, and go in the C-A-R, I can't say the word, without her. <laughs> now she doesn't know what to do with herself. She doesn't like this room, but she didn't want to be, She, I think she thought I was gone. Um, we had to talk this morning. I told her I was leaving, going to work today. And it's so funny when you're talking to her, she'll, she's like, like she's listening. It's so cute. Okay, where was I? Okay. Uh, Derek Chauvin. Okay, so they have this room set up. So there's there's like no room for for anybody. You know, like I said, one seat for a family member. So the um, one of the the one of the attorneys was talking, and um, the sister of George Floyd came in uh, during that during, and you could see her behind him, very well dressed, very beautiful, very well put together. She came in um, to the courtroom. So what? here's what was going on. They, the, I'm going to try to explain this as succinctly as I can. The appellate court, you know, there's three levels of courts in each state. There's the trial court, the appellate court and a, each state has a Supreme Court um, or a superior court. They, they call it different things. So in this state, um, you know, 
we know that the trial judge said no third degree murder charge. So it went to the appellate court and the appellate court heard arguments and said the trial judge, his reasoning was faulty. Uh, it, this needs to go back to him. He needs to reconsider this and use the correct, uh, you know, base it on the correct law. So at this point, you think, okay, we're going to move forward. The trial judge is going to add the third degree murder charge. No, no, no. Don't forget, there's the Supreme Court here. So once you have this ruling here, it's not final until 30 days after the ruling. Within that 30 days, any of the parties have the right to say, I don't agree. And they can say, move to the Supreme Court and ask the Supreme Court to consider hearing arguments on it. It's not a guarantee that the Supreme Court will even take the case, much less take it on an expedited basis so, this, so that this thing can move forward. So we start the day yesterday and the judge says, I don't have jurisdiction over adding this charge because the appellate court ruling isn't final until we know if it's going to go to the Supreme Court. And the guy, the, the attorneys were like, yeah, I owe it to my client to ma move this thing to the Supreme Court. So the judge says, well, I don't think that this is going to preclude us from moving forward with jury selection. So there was arguments about that because they felt like, yes, we need that charge to talk to the jury about, you know, potential jurors about. And the judge says, no, you don't. It's a lesser included offense um, because there's, he's charged with second degree murder, which it, it's an involuntary murder charge. And that carries up to 45 years in prison. That's the, the, the highest charge. He's also charged with second degree manslaughter. And then, uh, which I, I forget what the sentence is on that, but then down below would be that third degree murder, which carries a 25 year sentence. So it's really a lesser included offense. And the judge says, you know, we add, you know, at the end of the trials where we all, we add lesser included offenses all the time. I'm moving forward unless you guys, unless I hear from the appellate court, then I'm not allowed to move forward. So he recesses the case so that the, trial the attorneys could go file another motion with the appellate court stopping the case until there's a ruling you know final ruling so <laughs> at the end of the day the judge says or you know after lunch the judge says okay i'm going to go hear motions i'm going to hear all the motions in limine now motions in limine are just um, small little details that you know, kind of wrap up how the trial is going to proceed. Like we're going to talk about this, we're not going to talk about that. You know, little things. So they get they go through all those, and then the judge, uh, the attorney, say, you know, we got together, we looked at the first fifty jurors. You know, they fill out questionnaires. They've looked at the questionnaires, and here's a list of people that we think should be. Um, removed for cause and that could be like they're you know maybe they're undergoing chemotherapy maybe their grandma's sick maybe they can't do a long jury duty because they've got small children there's a, a number of reasons that could be so they announced you know out of the 50 maybe 20 or so that they were going to release for cause and then the judge says okay i'm going to tell those people they don't have to come back tomorrow the rest i'm going to have come back tomorrow um, for jury selection, unless I hear from the appellate court that I have to stop all proceedings. So that's where we're at. <laughs> it was a crazy day. So meanwhile, outside of the courtroom, there was a, a gathering, um, a very peaceful gathering. People just kind of marched by the courthouse. Um, which I thought was, you know, that was, um, I'm glad it was peaceful. Let's just say that. I'm glad it was peaceful. So, um, so no jury selection yesterday. So, uh, the judge says he intended to 
bring seven jurors, uh, potential jurors in in the morning for questions, seven potential jurors in the afternoon for questions. Um, that's how he likes to do it. Uh, as I was saying yesterday, um, most times it's a panel of 14 and I was correct in this state they are going to choose a panel of 14, two of which will be alternates. So um, we will find out this morning if the appellate court has said you cannot proceed or if we get into jury selection. Who knows? So, <laughs> what are you doing? What's going on there, girl? Why don't you lay down and get comfortable? Oh, she just does. She just does not like this room. Say, there's too much yarn in this room, mother. She wants me to go in the other room where she can lay on her couch and get comfortable. Hi, baby. You just go stand there, huh? You just go stand there. You want mommy to pet you? Okay. She's so cute. She never comes on camera. All right, here is the other case. Um, the consensus was yes, cover another case while this jury selection is going on. And I'm happy to, and I did get one request to, um, you know, ixnay the children. And I agree, let's not do children. Okay, so um, I picked a case out of Florida. Um, this <laughs> is a very interesting case. It's the case, uh, the murder of Teresa Seavers. And here's or Terry Sievers. Here's a picture of Terry. She was a YouTuber. She was a YouTube creator, a physician, a holistic physician. She had a holistic show that she promoted. Um, she was uh, set to travel with Oprah Winfrey on her little, you know, holistic tour. And she was kind of up and coming, um, you know, potential television show in the works um, for holistic medicine. So she had a private practice in Fort Myers, Florida, down near where I used to live. Um, she was married to Mark Sievers. Um, now here's a picture of Mark Sievers and his good buddy, um, Wainwright is the last name of this guy. He known, uh, so yesterday what I, I watched the opening arguments or the opening statements. Now, um, this is a case of murder, conspiracy, uh, you know, murder for hire, conspiracy to commit murder. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. There's lots and lots of witnesses. Um, it, this trial lasted a, a good long time. Um, so it, it's going to be an interesting case. So the prosecution yesterday, I wasn't terribly moved by their opening statement. She talked a lot about cell phones. <laughs> You're going to get clearly um, these two men who look very much alike grew up together. Mark, you know, her husband, Mark and this other guy, um, Wainwright. Um, they, they grew up together. Mark goes home for, or goes home to attend his friend Wainwright's wedding, um, allegedly solicits him to kill his wife, possibly for life insurance. Um, he then leaves after the wedding, flies to uh, New York with, where he meets up with his wife for uh, some kind of a birthday celebration. But his wife has to leave early to get back to her practice because she's a sole practitioner. She's the only one that sees patients. Um, so <clears throat> she leaves and there's, you know, footage of her at the airport uh, arriving in Fort Myers, and that's the last time she's seen alive. So, <clears throat> D 
the prosecution's argument was a lot about cell phones, how these two men bought burner phones and were communicating with each other on the burner phones, um, how they have the records of the burner phones, they have the records of the regular phone. Like she went on for an hour about cell phones. I'm like, ah, we get it. <laughs> okay, they're linked by the cell phone. We get it. Um, <laughs> So, um, and, and really didn't talk about much else, uh, but they do get, you know, a rebuttal. But so anyway, then the defense gets up and argues, you know, why, you know, this guy, Wayne Wright, he is the only witness against our client, Mark. Uh, this is, this is all his story. You know, he did it. Uh, basically, my client didn't know anything about it. My client didn't hire him to do it. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so I'm interested to see how that plays out. You know, my client's wife, Teresa, was worth more alive than dead. $5 million in insurance policies. I believe it was $5 million. But, you know, she was on the brink of getting this television show. She was on YouTube. She was, she was worth more alive than dead. Now, I can tell you as a YouTuber, <laughs> I'm worth more dead than alive. My life insurance is way more than what I make from YouTube. Way more. <laughs> and I looked at her channel. She had like, um, I don't know, 1,200 subscribers. Not 12,000. 1,200. <laughs> um so, uh, I don't know. But she could have had more than one channel. That's just the channel I could find. Um, and it was a holistic channel. And she would interview different people. So today I'm going to listen to the investigating officer, first guy on the scene, and uh, the lead investigator on the scene. I don't know if she was an investigator or if she was, if she's the... Uh, lead crime scene technologist. I'm not sure, but because I haven't listened to the to the testimony. So those those are the two biggies to, uh, that I'll cover tomorrow. But this is going to be an interesting uh, trial. So I'm going to try to, you know, I will update you on the jury selection, but let's move forward with the Teresa Sievers trial. Um, have I showed you all the pictures? Oh, here's one more picture of her. She, they had two daughters. Yes, two gorgeous daughters. So those are the daughters in the picture there. Oh, do, 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 do. I don't want to go to work. I never do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I want a Barbie. I want an Eleanor Roosevelt Barbie. Does any of you have an Eleanor Roosevelt Barbie? <laughs> you know what? You can buy them on Amazon. I'll just buy me one. Uh, no, I think they're sold out. Wait a minute. Let me look. I think they were on Amazon. Hold on. I want an Eleanor Roosevelt Barbie. Oh, last night. I did it. I Because, you know, I got my tax check. So, it's just burning a hole in my pocket. Got my curtains. Um, I ordered... An alpaca from Encari. I'm so excited. Just a medium one. They don't have pink. They never have pink. So I've just said fine. I'll just get one of the other colors. Um, but that's so cool. It's gonna be. I gotta fit up, you know, find a place in the background to put my alpaca when it comes. Um, I tried to buy some Furls crochet hooks because I love Furls crochet hooks and they were on sale. But something weird kept happening to my. You know, I'd go to check out and it would take me, it would hijack me and take me somewhere else. And I don't know. So I didn't order any of the crochet hooks I made. Let's see how much Eleanor Roosevelt costs. Um, oh, currently unavailable. We don't know when or if this item will be back in stock. Oh, I want Eleanor. So it doesn't even give me a price. I can say email me when it comes back in stock. <laughs> Like, I really need this thing, right? And she's, I just love the dress and the hat. And the, I just think it's so cool. So cool. The little, She comes with a little podium and the flags. 
oh my god and the background like the white house background and little chairs oh my god it's so cute inspiring women series <laughs> okay <laughs> whatever okay so it's tuesday tuesday do, 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 do. yeah going to work and um I don't have a lot of work to do. I got, well, I, I've got some stuff I can get done. Yeah. You know, that stuff that's always there and you just kind of, eh, you look at it and go, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I guess I'll do it today. <laughs> Might as well. So guys, that is the show for the day. I, I am so sorry if I confused you with all that appeal stuff. Um, please ask any questions that you have in the comments. I, I read every comment. You guys know that I love your comments. Um, have a great Tuesday, and I will see you.